Hi, it's Karen Q, and this is part two of my Memorial Day weekend tribute to the soldiers buried in the historic graveyards of New York City. Today's graveyard is Trinity Wall Street. I hope you enjoy it. Please like and share the video and help keep alive the stories of the men and women who so bravely fought in the American Revolution so that we could be the United States of America today. Thank you and enjoy. This is Trinity Wall Street. This church was built in 1846 and it is the third Trinity Church built on this site. The original church was built in 1697 and was a part of the Church of England. That church burned in a fire in 1776, was replaced by a second church that collapsed during a snowstorm and this church was built in 1846. It's a beautiful Gothic revivalist cathedral. After the American Revolution, the Church of England was no more and Trinity Church became the Episcopal Church of New York. During our walk through the graveyard, we'll see many markers like this indicating that the grave belongs to a Revolutionary War soldier. If you're facing the church from Broadway, the oldest part of the graveyard is on the right side of the church and predates the church itself. These graves date back to as far as 1685 and comprise a small graveyard that stood here before the church was built in 1697. If you enter the graveyard from the left side of the church, if you're facing on Broadway, one of the first things you'll pass is a marker placed in the church by the Society of the Cincinnati. That marker lists all of the Revolutionary War officers buried in the churches that belong to Trinity Church. That would be Trinity Wall Street, St. Paul's Chapel, and Trinity Uptown. To the right of the church, right by the sidewalk on Broadway, you'll see a row of graves all belonging to men in the same family who served in the Revolutionary War. The second grave to the left belongs to John Morin Scott, a young lawyer who was a part of a group of lawyers known by Tories or Loyalists as the Wicked Triumvirate. They were also called the Whig Triumvirate or the New York Triumvirate. As lawyers, they often fought legal cases on behalf of clients who were battling the Crown or the Parliament. Um, Scott served in the Revolutionary War as a general and then served in the Congress after the war. One of my favorite things about him is the epitaph in his burial notice, which says, Herein lies John Moran Scott, who was a thorn in the side of this church every day he walked this earth. The great John Moran Scott. Around the back of the church, we find the grave of one of my favorite people of the American Revolution, William Alexander, also known as Major General Lord Sterling. When I first started studying the American Revolution, I couldn't figure out why this Lord Sterling was fighting on the side of the Americans. Well, he was an American. He was an American of Scottish descent, and he was from New Jersey. Um, Sterling was loved by the men he commanded. He was a major general, and he often used his own family fortune to provide for his soldiers. But Sterling is most known for his stand at the Old Stone House in Brooklyn in August of 1776, where he and his men stood against an onslaught of British and Hessian soldiers to enable Washington to escape to Brooklyn Heights and make his then miraculous crossing into New York, escaping British commander William Howe. One of my favorite people of the American Revolution, a great New Yorker, Major General Lord Sterling. After we pass Sterling's grave and round the corner and come up a few steps, we find the grave of General John Lamb. And this is a very nice picture of his grave with his marker and little flag in front of it. John Lamb was a leader of the New York Sons of Liberty. He was a wine merchant and he went on to become an artillerist and command an artillery unit during the Revolutionary War. After the war, Mr. Lamb returned to his business. This is General John Lamb. Mm. Across the walkway from John Lamb, we find the grave marker of Colonel Marinus Willett. Willett, like Lamb, was a member of the New York Sons of Liberty, and like Lamb, often in trouble with local authorities for the antics of that group. He served as a colonel under Washington's command, came back to New York, and then served as a mayor of New York. Now, Colonel Willett is no longer buried here. His remains have been moved to another cemetery, but the original stone and marker remains here at Trinity Graveyard. Colonel Marinus Willett. 
In the back corner of the graveyard, we find the grave of Franklin Wharton. Wharton was the third commandant of the United States Marine Corps and served after the American Revolution. He was the first commandant to occupy the commandant's house, Marine Barracks, and was the son of a prominent Philadelphia businessman. He gave up his uh, potential life as a wealthy man to serve in the Marine Corps instead. Commandant Franklin Wharton, the United States Marine Corps. Almost directly in the middle of the left side of the graveyard, if you're facing Trinity Church from Broadway or the south side of the graveyard, you'll find the grave of Commodore Silas Talbot. Talbot began his service in the American Revolution in 1775 as a captain. In the summer of 1776, he found himself in New York, where he took command of a fire ship and attempted to set fire to the British warship HMS Asia. His attempt failed, but it got him promoted to major. He continued serving throughout the Revolutionary War, and then later, after the war, was recommissioned during the quasi-war with France, where he was made commander of the USS Frigate Constitution. Commodore Silas Talbot. The most visited grave in the graveyard is the grave of Alexander Hamilton. You can find it on the section of the graveyard to the left of the church when you're facing it from Broadway. Mr. Hamilton served first as a captain in the Revolutionary War and spent most of the war on George Washington's staff. In 1781, he was a colonel and he was given command of three of his own battalions, which he led at the Battle of Yorktown, which began the end of the Revolutionary War. Later, the title general was ceremonially bestowed upon him. So this is General Alexander Hamilton. We'll end our tour with a statue of Nathan Hale which stands in New York City Hall Park. Nathan Hale is not buried at Trinity Church or at St. Paul's Chapel because no one knows where to find the remains of the young captain. Captain Nathan Hale, 21 years old, gave his life for his country as a spy for George Washington. He was captured in the fall of 1776 and hanged in New York City. His body was dumped in an unmarked grave, and to this day, no one knows where to find his remains. So in honor of that brave young captain, we'll finish up today with Captain Nathan Hale. I hope you enjoyed our short walk through Trinity Church and St. Paul's graveyards, honoring our Revolutionary War veterans buried there. Please support Patriot Tours by following me on Facebook or on my YouTube channel. Also, please share my videos with whomever you think would be interested in them and help keep alive the story of the American Revolution and the men and women who risked everything so that they could become a nation free and independent of the British Empire. Let's never forget what they did for us. Happy Memorial Day.